This episode is made possible by our sponsor, Omega Bright Wellness. I've taken their Omega-3 supplements for many years, and so has my wife, and that's why I invited them to sponsor my podcast. I'm proud to have them. You can find all of their products online at omegabrightwellness.com, and bright is intentionally misspelled B-R-I-T-E, omegabrightwellness.com. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to Distraction. I have a wonderful guest today, a a true uh, veteran and hero in the world of ADHD by the name of Jeff Copper. He is the founder of Dig Coaching. He's a coach par excellence and the host of Attention Talk Radio, which performs a tremendous service to the ADHD community. The podcast is designed to help adults and children with ADHD in life or business who are stuck, overwhelmed, or frustrated. And that includes most of the people in the world who have this fascinating condition. So welcome to the podcast, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, thank you so much for the work that you do for the ADHD community. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, You asked me what I'd like to talk about, and I said whatever you want, but I think most people are always, always intrigued to hear a personal story. So how did you get into this this world of ADHD and, and the attention talk radio and the coaching business that you have? Uh, can you tell us about that? Sure. I um, It's actually a really, really long story with a lot of steps, but in a nutshell, um, I was a athlete that got I struggled as a kid with dyslexia and ADD. I uh, didn't know uh, about the ADD at the time. And I struggled in school. But what got me through is I was a competitive swimmer. I swam internationally for a period of time, was able to get to college on a scholarship. And when I got there, I had to figure everything out on my own. And I did with some pretty unorthodox means, if you will. Um, fast forward, I got into the working world and had some success. Uh, went and got my MBA a bit later and then started to kind of experiment around with some things. And some people said, you know, you should be a coach, like a life coach. So I explored it a little bit. And mm-hmm. ADD coaching really seemed to be a, a place to go uh, because I was a particularly organized person. And people mm-hmm. was like, hey, you could really help some people in this realm. So I got into it and immediately started having some difficulty. So I struggled with writing. I believe you're dyslexic, if I'm not mistaken, and you do a really good job with the written word and, and, and the done well, and I struggle with it. So when I first got into AD coaching, I had to kind of figure out how I was going to do it on my own and coach myself. And so interviewing people was a lot easier for me to create content. So I started Attention Talk Radio back in 2009. And since that time, I've done a, a show every week for over 10 years. And, you know, you and I have had some great shows. One of my honors was in 2004. 14 when you came on the show because I realized that the first written reference to ADHD coaching was in Driven Distraction in 1994 and that was the 20th anniversary and so it was a real privilege for me to interview you on that and all the other experts that I've had and since that time I really like ADHD coaching because of the creativity that's required to really talk about people and try to help them understand works what works for them and so I've been doing it ever since the real, a real joy more, and yes the, thank you Thank you for uh, recognizing that you know it was in driven to distraction that uh, I, I basically yep. invented coaching and then uh, <laughs> uh, then left it to other people uh, to to take it and run with it and and thank goodness you know the academic community laughed at me and they said Hallowell you know thinks coaching is important for ADHD and Biederman said uh, oh I thought that was for baseball players not for patients and yep. and now it's a, a it's a mainstay i mean there's seminars on coaching uh, continuing education on coaching institutes on coaching and it it's uh, it's it's really really works why don't you tell listeners what's so good about co- what is it first of all and what's so good about it for people with adhd well so there's when when it comes to coaching there's kind of two forms as i describe one is a behavioral approach uh, where if you're struggling with like time management, somebody will walk in with a Franklin planner and a bunch of colored pencils metaphorically and tell you what to do every day and you kind of coach your behavior. Then there's the other side, which is more of a life coaching side where 
you really look at people and you begin to say, hey, listen, you've got some systems. So what that looks like is a woman called me up one time with some uh, time management problems. And I said, tell me about time. What does it look like? She said, it's like a river that flows. And I, I won't go into the detail, but it's fascinating how there's, there's droughts in the rainy season and the river goes fast and there's rapids and it goes slow. But anyway, I started saying, you know, what is, how would we manage time in the context of a river? And we discovered that uh, we experimented around with timelines and for whatever reason, timelines work for her. And, you know, you can't buy timelines in the self-help section of the bookstore, but we really tried to understand her individual brain wiring and understand how she saw time. And we were able to come up with something that worked for her. Now, again, there's different kinds of coaches, but I can pair and contrast those two because both of them have a real good place. Um, I enjoy the more, I don't know what's going to work for you. Let's try to figure that out. Um, as an aside, I actually had a woman one time, incredible sense of smell. I mean, off the charts. And so we started experiment, experimenting around with it. And so we discovered a smell-based to-do list. And to my mm, surprise, wow. crayons have odor. And that's how she did it. And so it's, as you can see, that's not something you've probably heard of. But for some people with ADHD, because their brain wiring is a little different, with a little bit of creativity, you can come up on some solutions like that that seem really, really odd that really, really work for people like her. Make sense? That's a great example. So how does a smell-based to-do list work? I don't recall why, but when she would um, smell a crayon, by the way, they have color. And I think you can get the 164 pack. It would, she would associate things with it. And literally all she would do is take the color and she would draw a line on the sheet of paper and she would just take her nose and she'd smell it. And she'd go through her list. And I, for whatever reason, it's almost like the smell kind of hung in her mind. I, I know I do exercises, what I call attention exercises with other people on some other topics. And I'll talk to them and they say, well, how'd you remember that? She said, I could hear your voice echoing in my mind. So for whatever reason with her, she would smell it and would hold her attention and she would be able to remember it to go execute whatever task that is. And so it's uh, you're more of an expert on, on the brain and, and the particular wire. And I'm just a coach. I just kind of help people find out what works and we do it. But um, that was, that was just a fascinating instance. Um, another story, I was working with a woman one time and she, she drew right. She wanted to talk about a to-do list. And I said, well, what'd it be like if you drew pictures of what your to-do was? So she gave it a shot and she came back the next week and says, oh my God, that was really, really helpful. And I said, great. Normally I would uh -huh. end there, but she said, you know something? I never, I never realized that a letter is a symbol. And when I add the letters of a word into a word, that's a symbol. And then when I read a sentence, I actually have to build a picture in my mind. So she said, I, she noticed how she would read the to-do, then she would go and get distracted, and she would have to go back and reassemble the picture in her mind. And she said, I would just get, I just get to where I wouldn't do it anymore. She said, where I draw the picture, I can look at the picture, I would make that association, I wouldn't have to build the picture in my mind. She said, because I didn't have to go through the work, I would follow up on it a little bit easier. Again, just a fun little story to share what this looks like. Yeah, no, absolutely. The visuals always matter in the world of ADHD. And and you added in smell. That that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Um, that's one of the things that I spend a lot of a lot of time on because working memory is is visual imagery or self talk and a lot of people with ADHD that struggle. A lot of times mm -hmm. they're struggling because they can't visualize something or they, they they can't think in their mind. I do a lot of helping them realize that focus problem that you have. It's a focus problem, but when your working memory is overtaxed and you can't see it, let's mm -hmm. focus on relieving that, and then they can actually pay attention to it for a little bit longer. So uh, you just brought that up, and I just want to reiterate that a lot of times in coaching, we're looking at working memory to try to address that to make it easier for people to think. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That That's um, make it easier to think. So you get, you get yep. what's standing in the way out of the way. Exactly. It's a little bit of a... You know, kind of digging down a little bit deeper to some things as opposed to just um, more superficial type ways of addressing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I know one of the things that, that I do a lot of is um, back when I went to school, you would highlight a book in your notes and you put it right next to your eyes would dart back and forth uh, to read right. and compare notes. In the, right. in the academic world, a lot of students are trying to work on a laptop and if you read something – and then you click on a tab and you scroll down trying to remember what you read from one tab or one browser to another. Often you forget what you read while you're scrolling. Well, that's a working memory issue. And a lot of students will want tip tricks and strategies to deal with that when they really just need a second computer screen so they can put both of them up and their eyes dart back and forth.
not a commonality mm. in the college environment, commonality in the corporate environment, because they realize that's there. But a lot of students don't realize it's not the tip trick or strategy. It's just you need a second screen so your eyes don't have to hold that while they're scrolling around. Oh, that's another great idea, Jeff. Yeah. Did, did an interview years ago with Dr. Russell Barkley, and we talked about working memory and how like paper sometimes high tech for people with ADHD because you can spread it out and see it all as opposed to trying to look through everything on a really small computer screen. Right, right, right. What, what are the age, ideal age for coaching? What's the youngest you, you can successfully coach? Uh, I'm more of a... Behavior modification, I think, is is probably more appropriate for the younger ones, teens, et cetera. I spend more time uh-huh. with adults, 20 and up, because I do a lot of trying to help them understand where it works based off of their successes, as opposed to trying to change the system. We always go back and say, well, what systems do you have in place? And mm-hmm. for an older adult, it's easier to have those conversations, which is um, I actually have a lot of. I have a philosophy about organizational systems and everybody has a system. And if you focus on your current system and understand Mm -hmm. why it's there, it's usually easier just to tweak that system than it is Mm -hmm. to build something completely new. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's always easier if you're not starting from square zero. Over the past few months, I've spoken to my friend, the founder and creator of Omega Bright Wellness, Dr. Carol Locke, about the benefits of taking Omega Bright's Omega-3s, CBD, and other supplements. Here's a clip from one of those conversations. Now, there are many different, many different products, uh, brands of fish oil. Why is Omega Bright the best? What I can speak to with Omega Bright is is it's a very different formula than typically what you can get in the store or online, and it's Omega Bright is clinically proven. We have over ten studies in major academic centers showing Omega Bright improving mood, helping with bipolar, with depression, with ADHD, with anxiety, with inflammation. So it's a very proven. Uh, product for you to gain these benefits, and these benefits we know come from Omega Bright. You can't get that with a typical Omega 3, which has, say, 180 milligrams of EPA in it. That just isn't going to provide that benefit. Distraction listeners, you can save 20% on your first order at OmegaBrightWellness.com by using the promo code PODCAST2020. All right, let's get back to today's topic. So one of my favorite stories, I was coaching a uh, real estate agent, uh, residential. And it's funny, she she came to me because she described herself as a hot mess and she was disorganized. And one day she said, I need to organize the way I track my prospects or my sales. And uh, Uh What's traditional is you go in, you lug all your your clients into a contact relationship manager, which requires you go to the computer and a lot of tedious stuff. And I said, no, 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 let's just take a look at your current system. And she argued with me that she didn't have a system. And I said, no, you do. You you sell. You've got some clients. So after spending about 15 minutes of having a conversation with her about what she was doing, we realized every morning she'd wake up and she would scroll through her text in her phone and she Mm -hmm. would scroll through her voicemails. What we realize is that everybody who's, who's reaching out to her or contacting her by those means, she would scroll and she would see the names, which would help her work in memory, identify what was there. And sometimes she would be really busy in a day and she wouldn't get back to everybody. So the next day she felt mm. a little bit panicked trying to catch up, whether it's her text or her voicemails. And we began to realize it was a routine that she did every day was scrolling through her phone. We didn't have to do anything about mm-hmm. that. She would identify yeah. and react to it. So that was working, but she was overwhelmed by it all because she couldn't yeah. see all the clients. And literally all we did is we got some post-its, two colors. One was for buyers and one was for listing agents. We, she went through, put her, put their names on the post-its, put them on a poster board and put on her chest of drawers. And she put the, the, the prospects that were high at the top. One let's listers, buyers on one side, listers on the other. And now she could see mm-hmm. all of her activity. In that moment, mm-hmm. she, number one, she was like, wow, I'm doing pretty good. And number two, 
calm came over her because the issue was is that she had a good system, but she felt overwhelmed because she couldn't conceptualize it. And all we did was put it on the post-its and she could see it. She didn't interact with it and just brought a lot of peace to her. So in that situation, I'm demonstrating how we didn't have to go to a whole new organizational system. All we had Mm -hmm. to do was solve this one little problem. And what didn't seem to work was actually working very, very well. Didn't look like what maybe a system should look like. But I find a lot of people with ADHD sometimes, if you just look at things as to what's working, what's the system, you can just tweak them a little bit. And all of a sudden, you get something that works. A little different, huh? wonderful you're a wealth of creative interventions jeff it's terrific yeah it's it another story one of my favorites is i was actually coaching a psychiatrist one time that had adhd and they wanted coaching one day because they were late all the time and Mm -hmm. uh you want a time management system they said yeah i said well let me tell you let me ask you how late are you they said 10 15 minutes late i said you ever an hour late well yeah daylight savings time you're ever an hour early? <laughs> yeah, daylight savings. Ah, oh, you're funny. <laughs> so I said, let me get this straight. You're 10 to 15 minutes late, like 98% of the time. They said, yeah. I said, well, what's your system? They said, that's what I want coaching on. I go, well, if you're consistently that late, you got to have a system. Like, if you didn't have a system, you'd be like 45 minutes late. You missed the appointment. He goes, I don't know. I guess I don't like to be bored. And I go, there you go. He goes, what? I go, well, there's no time management system in the world that's going to solve that problem. Then we began to have a conversation about boredom and he had sometimes when he would, a patient would come into the room and the nurse was there, he would walk in waiting for that. He barely would get off on something that he shouldn't have been doing and would get in trouble because he didn't do well with boredom. So when we got done, we began to realize, number one, he did have a system. Number two, there was right. a legitimate reason why he had that system to keep him out of trouble. And so we right. walked away feeling good about it. Now, people complained a little bit about it, but he's like, you know, I know you're complaining about it, but it's better than if I'm doing something I shouldn't do and I don't have to regulate. So, again, these are some stories that some people probably didn't expect, but um, by looking at yourself and trying to understand why you do it, sometimes you can find some pretty cool stuff in the coaching paradigm. Sometimes you might do something, something put push it, but other times it's, wait a second, I actually do have a system so from an emotional perspective, I can realize there's nothing wrong. It's a legitimate reason I do that. And sometimes it comes to grip with it. Yeah. Just absolutely. fun stories. Yeah. Wonderful stories. Wonderful stories. And it, tell us about Attention Talk Radio. Well, Attention Talk Radio, as I described earlier, was born um, for me because I couldn't write. So I started interviewing experts topically. When I first started doing this it, I was like, okay, I'll probably do a year's worth of, of uh, topics because there's 52 weeks in a year. What really, I mean, how many topics could there be? Well, it's over 10 years later, still been doing the same thing and still been coming in with um, more and more topics. And as I've done that, I've learned over the years a lot from, again, experts like yourself or uh, Dr. Thomas Brown or Dr. Barkley or like Ann Dolan, educator or other coaches, et cetera. And so it's always been amazing to me that fundamentally there's a limited number of concepts, but we've come up with lots of ideas that we illustrate. Like one of my favorites was with Ari Tuckman one time when we talked about manners, teaching kids manners. Now we think uh-huh. of manners as something that kids should do, but when you think about it, self-regulation is the ability to pause and override your urge just to do something. And if you're going to have manners like hold the door for somebody or wait for everybody to be seated, you actually have to practice right. self-regulating. So we did the show and we kind of illustrated how as a parent, you could use manners as a self-regulation exercise. Like don't worry about the manners coming into place, but continue to do it on a regular basis. Cause it actually can teach kids the skill of stop mm-hmm. pausing and overriding some of that stuff to help them develop that skills. Um, We've had that. We've had other shows that I'd like to do is like years ago, I was interviewing Dr. Roberto Olivardia, who's a uh, psychologist. um, And we talked about how, when he did his um, uh, Harvard dissertation, he wrote it in two weeks. Uh, Most people would write their, their dissertation, like in a room with quiet he actually wrote his with punk rock videos playing on the same screen that he was writing. He said the beat of the words kind of kept him focused so he could kind of get through that stuff. And so it's been a fun journey along the way with attention talk radio, learning from mental health professionals, learning for teachers, lived experiences, um, some quirky um, things that work for some people and uh, et cetera. So it's been a, 
it's been a real journey. And for me, I started doing it as a means not to write, um, but to get something out there. <laughs> Little did I know I would get an amazing uh, education along the way. And I know, Ned, you've got a bunch of stories of, of you know, things in your life that really kind of helped you. And one of my favorite is, I think it was your first grade or second grade teacher would kind of help you read. And I think I've heard yes. you say before, you know, who would have believed that I would make a living with words when it was such a struggle back in those days, you know, which is, yes. I think, yes. really the story about people with ADHD, right? I, I couldn't agree with you more. You're absolutely, Jeff. It, it's it's really terrific. I've, I've heard you speak a lot. One of the things that you say that I don't everybody gets is that it's in the moment that you accept yourself and you you don't you quit fighting your ADHD and you begin to step in who you are that that transformation really takes place. And I think that you're a testament to that, um, as other people are. And again, you said that before. I just want to highlight your own personal story is your own triumph and, and accepting who you are. And I know you dedicate, you know, your practice and what you do to helping people do the same thing. And so those that are out there that are struggling, I encourage you to kind of take that mindset. It'll help you a lot. You know, you're, you're so right. And I, you're very kind to say that. It, it, and you've certainly done the same time, the same thing. Well, listen, I, I'm sorry we're, we're running out of time. You can find Jeff on the web at digcoaching.com. And you can check out his podcast at attentiontalkradio.com. Jeff is a, a marvelous contributor to the world of ADHD and a, just a font of uh, stories, experiences, tips, as, you, as you've gotten a taste of today. Okay, if you haven't heard, my new book, ADHD 2.0, is available now. You can find a copy wherever books are sold or by going to my website, drhallowell.com or by clicking the link in the show notes. And remember to follow Distraction on social media, and please continue to reach out to us with your comments and questions. Our email address is connect at distractionpodcast.com. Distraction is created by Soundscrape Media. Our audio engineer is the wonderful Scott Person, and our producer is the supremely talented Sarah Gurton. I'm Dr. Ned Hallowell. Thanks to Jeff Copper and thanks to you for listening. The episode you just heard was made possible by my good friends at Omega Bright Wellness. I take their supplements every day and that's why I invited them to sponsor my podcast. Shop online at Omega Bright, and that's B R I T E Wellness.com.